1, the book of James, chapter number 1. This morning, I'd like to give you something I believe would be a help to you. I know it will. Something that every single person in here today needs. You will not miss a single person here today with this thought. James, uh, right after the book of Hebrews, chapter 1, and uh, we'll look at verse number uh, 12, maybe, right along in there somewhere. James chapter 1, verse 12. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man with evil. See, that's what that means. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. Sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. I want to preach this morning. I'm not going to preach like I usually do. I guess you could say this this morning is going to be more in the form of a teaching or a lesson. I'm going to do a little, little more teaching, a little less preaching or uh, mix it in together today on that word, temptation. A temptation basically is a proposition to satisfy a good appetite in a wrong way. Everything, good, everything bad in this world is something good twisted. God made everything good to start with and sin, the devil, and us has twisted it and made things bad. Um, temptation is something every person must expect, and it's coming, and it's coming regularly. Even the Lord Jesus Christ was tempted, and he was perfect, and he didn't even have a sin nature. And I like the old song that people used to sing in church. You don't hear it a whole lot anymore. It says, yield not to temptation, for yielding is sin. Each victory will help you some other to win. That means every time you resist a temptation, you're stronger when the next one comes. Every time you give in to a temptation, you're weaker when the next one comes. The, you, you give in, you get weaker. You, you resist, you get stronger and stronger and, and stronger. Um, you, I think I heard Brother Mike mentioning it in Sunday school about uh, you have to learn not to put yourself in a position a lot of times so when you know you're going to be tempted like the, like the little boy they, his mom kept fussing at him for going swimming every evening she said now I don't want you going in that river swimming no more but he said alright I won't but I'm going to take my bathing suit in case I'm tempted see that he knew good and well in the back of his mind that he was going to want to and he was going to give in to the temptation so today uh, I want to I want to think about it. temptation is like there's a certain spider. It's amazing how some of the little animals, insects are, that looks just like a, a flower or a or a on, on a on a bush on a on a a, a rose like a rose petal, and it can make itself look just like a daisy or something like that. And a honeybee sees it and thinks he's going in to get honey, and instead it's a spider and it kills him, poisons him. That's what temptation is. It's something the devil puts like a hook inside of a bait, and the fish, the fish swimming around down there, all he sees is that bait. He don't see the hook inside of it. That's what temptation is. And so we're going to do a little Bible study on temptation this morning, and I'll pick it up here in a little bit, but I want you to get the, the basic, the foundation of this first. Number one, the source of, of temptation, the source of temptation. This scripture makes it plain today that God is not the source of temptation. The source of temptation is, of course, none other than uh, the devil himself. And uh, the devil is begin the temptation there in the Garden of, of Eden. Many people confuse uh, Abraham. God, the Bible where God said God did tempt Abraham, and and that uh, and he put Abraham to that test of faith. 
but God don't tempt with evil. I just read it to you. God don't tempt anybody to sin. And so when it says God did tempt him, there's a difference between a tempt to sin and, and a test that God puts you through. You have to understand how to read your Bible. You'll cut yourself with it. And uh, the source of temptation is the devil himself. And the source of temptation is our own flesh. A lot of times we blame stuff on the devil and it ain't nothing but us. Amen. And uh, the devil made me do it. My foot. Uh, the devil don't make you do nothing. You do what you do because you choose to do it. And it's your decision and it's your fault and you can't blame somebody else. Uh, we're living in a generation where no matter what somebody does, they blame it on somebody else. Well, this and well, that, and you don't know how I've been treated, and bull like that. Uh, you do what you do because you choose to do it, and it's your fault, and you're going to answer to God for it. You're not going to blame nobody else. I'll say more about that in a minute. But the source of temptation is the devil. The source of temptation is our own wicked flesh, and the source of temptation can be evil companions. In Proverbs chapter 1, the Bible talks about uh, a man is pulled in with this evil crowd. Young people are, are, are noted for this. They get with a gang of kids. They would not planning on doing nothing. All the kids get drunk or get high or, or, or go to a party or something. Next thing you know, they're doing that very same thing. It's a companions, people you hang around with, people you go with. By the way, I can tell you what you are or what you will be by the people that you run around with. You're going to be like them. Uh, eventually, you're going to be like them. They're not going to become like you. You're going to become like them. That's the way it always works. When well, you throw a kid in the swimming pool, the pool don't dry up. Uh, the kid gets wet. Uh, he's not big enough to soak all that water up, and he, he, he gets in. You get in with evil companions, they're not going to change to suit you. You're going to change to suit them. And so that's the source of temptation. Number two, I'm going to talk about the reasons for temptation. Have you ever wondered why, why do we even have to deal with this? Why did God make it? How come God didn't just fix it so that, so that we didn't have temptation? And the answer is very obvious to that. It's, not a, it's a long theological study. I mean, you can study for a week on it. But basically, God is love. And to have, if, if something's love, it must be something to love. So God makes us creation to love. God loves us. That's his main attribute is love. Now, for love to be real love, it has to be returned. So the, re the only way it can be returned is for this object to have a choice. If God made us robots and we were just clones saying, yes, I worship you, that's not love. The only way love can be love is have a choice. God had a choice whether he loved us. We have a choice to whether we love him back. So there has to be a third party in there. That's the devil and temptation to sin. Then we choose between sin and God. That's why temptation comes. The reason for temptation is to test our faith. In James chapter 1, the Lord uh, told, he said, Brethren, uh, count it all joy when you fall into divers temptation. It's to test our faith to see how real and how strong our faith is. And uh, they, uh, it's like this. They said they built, a, um, built this big bridge and these big uh, contractors built this humongous bridge and they were wanted to test it to see if it would hold uh, the load of a train going over it. And they took two locomotives, engine, and set them on that bridge and let them idle real fast and sit there a half a day. That was all the shaking of two trains and the bridge stood the test. It was a test of that bridge's strength. And, the, and temptations come, it'll help you if you look at it like this. When something comes your way and you're really tempted with something, and it's really bothering you, just remember that bridge. That bridge held up under the weight of those two locomotives uh, uh, rattling on top of it. It's to test your faith. And every time you pass that test, God says, amen, the Lord blesses you. You get blessed and you get rewarded. And every time you give in to that temptation and crash, it causes a mess. So the reason is to test our faith. And not only that, it's to test our obedience. God lets you go through things. I know people say, I heard somebody say one time, they said, uh, you know, the Lord 
trust you to go through a honk, strong temptation. And the man said, boy, he must really trust me uh, uh, because I am going through it. Uh, let me tell you, I am being tempted. And you might feel like that this morning. You say, Brother Danny, I don't know why God has so much confidence in me, but he's sure letting me be tempted. I'm tempted to do something I shouldn't do. I know I shouldn't be doing it, but it's, oh my goodness, I can't hardly, I can't hardly say, it's like something pulls on you. It's like literally a magnet just pulling on you and you can't get it out of your mind and you can't get it out of your thoughts and you can't get it out of your heart and you say, God, help me and it don't go away. And you say, God, please, I don't want to do it like it. And then finally, you, you, you'll either say, by the grace of God, I'm, I'm going to resist this or you'll give in to it and figure out a way it was God's will to start with and to lie to yourself. Uh, but it is a temptation, the source of temptation, and the reason for temptation is to test our obedience. Number three, I'm going to talk about the load limit of our temptations. The load limit. God not only knows what you can stand, he knows your load limit. All of us, if you've been driving long, out in the country, you go out in the country and you come up on these, these little old country roads and you come up on one of them little bridges. And that little bridge says, limit, uh, so many times, uh, 15 times, 20 times or whatever. That means, that means nothing over that amount of weight can go on that bridge. I remember years ago, we used to take kids to camp, and we, we took a bunch of them out there at the camp, out there in Marion, and that old dirt road, and it had little old bridges. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. I mean, them little old bridges. I, I think uh, one of them was like 16 tons. I'm not sure about that, but uh, uh, 12, 16 tons, something like that. And one day, we had that big, gigantic, like a trailways bus. Well, that thing probably weighed 25,000 pounds, I guess. And it was loaded with kids and loaded with luggage. And, 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 and it, it was, uh, it was uh, and, we come out and somebody said, you can't take that bus across that bridge, preacher. And I said, well, let's see here for a minute. Uh, oh, they always fudge on that a little bit so they won't get sued. Uh, it'll probably, it'll probably, it'll probably be all right. And, and they said, no, Brother Danny, and I, it's a pretty long bridge. And the river was way down there. And the thought crossed my mind, yeah, what if? What if we got right in the middle of that bridge and that thing breaks? It's 100 years old. And, and uh, I said, and they said, well, what are we going to do? I said, all right, everybody off the bus. Everybody off the bus. I made everybody get off the bus and walk across the bridge. And we all walked across the bridge. I said, all right, come on. He said, you going to let me go down? I said, well, somebody got to drive it. I ain't gonna. And he said, uh, and uh, so, so he eased on across that bridge and we made it safe and sound. Uh, but, everything, but you know, uh, you can only put so much pressure on them, on them things. And eventually, they're going to break. And I'm glad, I'm glad and I'm thankful this morning. My father knows how much I can take. I'm glad he knows. As a matter of fact, he said, uh, the, the Lord, when he's talking about 1 Corinthians 10, 13, a verse that all of you should memorize. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. You're not the only one that's ever been through this. You're not the only one that's ever been tempted like this. It ain't, you're not nothing special. It's common to man. Lots and thousands of people are going through the same thing you're going through. And God said, who will with the temptation? God will not allow it to be more than you can bear. God will not. I thank God. People say, well, it just got so bad I couldn't help it. And yes, you could. God never put a temptation on you that you could not resist. Amen. I'm glad of that this morning. I'm thankful that no matter how bad temptation comes, it's never, so, well, I just couldn't help it, Lord. It's your fault for letting this come on me. Nope, you can't do that. He will not allow you to be tempted above ye are able. He knows your load limit. He knows your load limit. He knows your time limit. In other words, he sets a time limit and then he'll jerk the devil off of you for a while. He'll, he'll make him leave you alone for a while. Like he did Jesus. He hit Jesus with them three main temptations. Turn the, the, the uh, rock into bread. He hadn't eaten 40 days. Uh, bow down and worship me. Cast yourself off here. Commit suicide. 
That's a big temptation, suicide to a lot of people. And the devil tried it, and Jesus said, no, no, no. And the devil left him for a little while. So God lets the timing of our temptation. And now, now, now let's talk a little bit about the types of temptation. The types of temptation. We all go through. Uh, of course, there's unbelief. In Genesis chapter 3 and verse 1, the Bible said the devil came along and he said, uh, Yea, hath God said, the first thing he did was put a question mark on that book right there, Amen. on what God said. And did you know it's a temptation? We got this idea that all only temptation there is is like to, you know, to steal money or, or lust or something like that or or do something, go on drugs or drink liquor or something. We got this idea that that's all the temptation is. No, it's a temptation to doubt the Bible. Right. It's a temptation to doubt God. Did God really mean that? You think he really is paying attention to us? Is he really coming back? That's a temptation. It's a temptation to doubt what God said. Amen. I was thinking this week, about uh, kids and how uh, little Frankie, bless his heart, poor little guy. He 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 just runs around in the morning. He he don't know where he's at. He don't. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, he he just comes running in there and he they he's not a bit worried. Is he going to get to eat? He's not a bit worried. Is the heat turned off? He's not a bit worried. Is there going to be water to drink? He just figures we'll they'll do it. They'll do it, and he knows that, that me and, and Kelly are going to take care of him. And a kid, uh, when, when I was growing up, I was like that. I don't ever remember, some kids have to, but I never remember laying down at night thinking, I wonder if we're going to have electricity tomorrow. I never thought that. My daddy, he, Lord, before he'd let that happen, he'd, he'd went out and cut a tree down in the middle of the night and let it fall on the house and claim the insurance on it or something. Uh, uh, he didn't do that. But uh, he'd figure out something, brother. He, he'd go buy a shotgun for $20 and sell it for $50. Uh, he would do something. And I just knew that daddy was going to take care of us. And I got to thinking, listen, people, that's how sure our Heavenly Father will take care of me and you. Don't mean we're going to get everything we want all the time. But I guarantee you one thing, hallelujah. He's a good father and he's watching over us and it's a sin for us to doubt his care. Sin. Sin for it. See, you, you, you thought it's only just because you ain't cussed lately or you ain't uh, done like that. Boy, I'm really living right. It's sin for you to doubt God's care for you. Uh, just unbelief. Uh, all kinds of things. Power. Money. Pride, pleasure, possessions, uh, all kinds of things can, are types of sin. And, and I want to take just a minute to, I was praying last night and this morning, and I woke up this morning, these thoughts started coming to, to me. I said, uh, never, never, never underestimate the power of them. In, in other words, what I'm saying is this. You, you may have your life pretty well, what you call right this morning. And I'm talking to every person in here. Not one person am I leaving out when I say this. You, there's people sitting in here this morning, you are, quote, living right by your own standards and by most people's standards. Nobody can find outwardly anything wrong with your life. I mean, here you are in church on Sunday morning. You've got a Bible in your lap. You've, you've come to, uh, to worship the Lord. Uh, you didn't, you didn't uh, do nothing wicked this week. You didn't... Uh, uh, I mean, you didn't rob a bank or get drunk or, or run around on your spouse or something like that. This, I mean, you've done right. You've, you've served the Lord. But, but let, me, let me encourage you here something. You better watch out. This old flesh is sneaky and tricky. Ain't that right? It's tricky. It's like your kids. There's two sitting right over there. Marty and... and uh, Tringe, over. raise your hand over our girls. See them two girls right there? They went visiting with me yesterday, and it's, are we going to stop the flea market? Are we going to get some candy? Can I have a cookie? Can I have a cookie? And here's where it goes. That's fine. You can put them down now. Thank you very much. Them two little darlings right there <laughs> sat in the car, and I've noticed them. Oh, con, little con artist, man. Them kids are... Uh, can we have this? Nope. Okay, you back it down a little bit. Well, can I have this? No. Well, can I have this? 
you know, you start, and, and that's, the way, that's the way your flesh is. Your flesh says, I'm, I'm not getting drunk, I quit drinking. But can I, you know, get some legal cannabis or something? <laughs> or something? Can, I, can I do something to feel a little bit high? Oh, I don't know where that come from. Somebody must have needed it. I see these signs everywhere. Lord, you rub that thing on your ear and it'll cure cancer, according to them people. But anyway, you, isn't that the way your flesh does? Let, let me make it a little plainer. The preacher said not to watch them old dirty, wicked movies, and he's right, but I'll watch this one. See, oh, I don't watch that porn preacher. You watch them our movies, and that's just as wicked. It may, oh, it ain't either. Well, it may not be as, but you, it's like, you know, drinking vodka's bad, but that don't mean it's hard to drink wine. You, you got to watch your flesh. It's tricky. Your flesh will trick you. It's conniving. I, I can't afford to pay my tithes, so it's all right. God's okay with that. Well, that might be why you're so broke. I don't know. You just might be you need to pray about it and get fit. This, this movie's rated R. It's got a real good story to it. I know there's dirty and there's wicked talk and there's cuss words and there's naked people and there's anything, anything, but but since I don't do that bad stuff, this is okay. And by the way, my wife's hateful to me anyway, so I, it's all right for me to look at other women. That's your flesh right there. My husband's he's so cruel to me, it's all right for me to flirt at work. See how you're trying to jump? This old brain right here, it'll wiggle around and jump around. It's like a rat trying to find a way out, out, of a, out of a hole. You'll justify it. You'll figure out every way in the world why it's all right for you to look at dirty stuff on your phone. Oh, well, I'll do it. I'm, yeah, you do it because you're full of the devil and you're following the devil. It's a lust of the flesh and it's sin. It's a sin. It's a sin. You ain't never going to get no help saying that your sin ain't a sin. I'm not really doing nothing. I'm just looking. According to Jesus, you're doing something. That's right. He said, he that looked on a woman that lust after her hath committed adultery with her. And you'll answer to God for adultery. Amen. Temptation. Temptation's not a sin. But when you give in to it, then you've sinned. I go to church all the time. It's okay if I take off rolling a loaf or all over creation. No, it ain't. That's your flesh. I'm good night, I go all the time. It's okay if I lay out. It's okay. Listen, that shows a basic problem you have with God and with church. Listen, a, a person that's right with God wouldn't even say, oh boy, I'm on vacation so I get to lay out of church. There, there's something wrong with your brain if you even think like that. It ought to bother you if you don't get to go to church on the night. I know y'all getting quiet, but listen, everything I'm saying is right, and you know it's right. I wouldn't give you a dime for a preacher that didn't preach to me. Amen. Preach on. I have nerve problems. That's why I'm a drug addict. My mom and dad abused me. That's why I smacked my wife. Yeah, it's not your fault. You're not a sinner. See, that's, you're, you, you're just like a crackhead. Same as a crackhead. It's just a different sin. It's just a different sin. I'm not gossiping. I'm sharing a prayer request. See, yeah, you're a drug dealer. Same as, same as sin, as far as sin goes. <whistles> Types of temptation. And then let me say next, number five, the results of temptation. There's only two results. Anytime you're tempted, anytime I'm tempted, anytime anybody's tempted, there's only two possible results. Results. Resist or give in. Resist or give in. That's the only two resu results they are. Yield not to temptation, for yielding is sin. Each victory will help you, some other to win. Don't ever forget that. Don't ever forget that. I've, for years, I'm going to tell you something funny. I'm not told you this before, but this is weird. Did you know you can train your brain to think? One way or another way. You can train your brain to think good. You can train your brain to think. You really can. And that's why the Bible said, if any, uh, if, any, uh, 
if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, let him think on these things, uh, uh, me meditate on these things day and night. You, years and years ago, when I, I got right with the Lord and I, I gave up all my bad music, you know, sorry, heavy rock music I listened to, and I gave it up, and, and I'd go somewhere and I would, uh, one of them pop, song would pop in my head. And I'd be going down the road singing that bad song. And I think, this ain't right. I shouldn't be doing this. So I had a song that I always went to. This is over 35 years ago. And the song was called, I'll Be in the Rapture. And it started out like, when Jesus rides out on the glory cloud and Gabriel's trumpet sound, gate will burst open, we'll be going up home. When Jesus raptures all his children home, I'll be in the rapture when he gathers. So every time I thought of bad music, I would make myself start singing that song until it just pushed that other one out. And I've done that, I mean, that was 30-something years ago. And the weirdest thing, to this day, to this day, I heard some music the other, it's like three days ago, and I got up singing, Lord have mercy, what did I get up singing the other day? Hey Jude, sure did. Hey Jude, that stupid piano player. And the demons was in that thing. The minute you let it under your skin, you'll start feeling better. That was demon inspired, brother. And I was going down the road saying, don't make it bad. Take the sad song. And I was drunk running. I said, what am I doing? And immediately kicked in. I'll be in the rapture when he gathers his own. And here's the way it went. I'm going to be honest with you because it might help you. I was running. On wings of love I'll run. Oh, I wonder where that car's going. Let me hey, you. And it come back. It did. And I said, I'll be in the rapture when you get there. And I, I went back and forth. It's like AM and FM, man. It was like flesh and spirit, flesh and spirit, flesh and spirit. You got somebody flirting with you at work? That's what you got to do with that. You tempt, you know, on your way to work, listening to the wrong kind of music? That's what you got to do. You have to train your brain. Each victory will help you some other to win. The more you resist, the stronger you get. The more you give in, the weaker you get. I'm going to tell you something else too, people. You can't play with it. You play with it. You play with fire, you're going to get burned, buddy. You flirt around a little bit. It's a fire you can't stop after a while. And it'll mess your life up. And you'll beg God a thousand times. And you can't go back and undo it then, buddy. What's done's done. There's one thing about sin. God can forgive it and does forgive it. But it's still done and gone. There ain't nothing, no way you can undo it. You can tie a knot in time you can't undo in eternity. Types of temptation. Results of temptation. If you resist, the Lord is glorified and you get strengthened. Matter of fact, one of the strongest, best testimonies to a lost world is when they see a Christian tempted and, and resistant. That's a strong testimony. It really, really, really is. I'll say one more thing. Number six about victory over temptation. And this will help you. Write this down. Remember what I'm saying. Here's how you get victory over temptation. Number one, you... You use the word of God. Now, I use that song, I'll be in the rapture, and I've done it for years, and it automatically kicks in my head. Done it all these years. But if you have a temptation for a certain thing at work or something, get you a verse of scripture and have it ready. And whenever that temptation comes, what did Jesus do? Jesus didn't say, now you get out of here, devil, and leave me alone. He quoted scripture. That's the sword of the spirit. If, if I'm going to, if, if a, a guy's going to come in and fight me and, and, uh, and I got a sword right here, I'm not going to say, now you guys better leave me alone. I'll punch you in the nose. Huh? I'm going to grab that sword, buddy. That's right. That's right. You're going to grab your weapon. You're going to grab your weapon. That's your weapon. That's your weapon. You're not strong enough. It's not your willpower. It's not your, it's not your great training or your ego or how much of a moral person you are. That's got nothing to do with it. Some of the greatest moral people you've ever met fail, brother, in temptation. Some of the greatest men in the Bible fail under temptation, and you will too. You cannot resist temptation of your own willpower and strength. 
It is the Word of God. It is written. It is written. Right. Well, when the boys at work say, hey, you want to go get a cold one after work? It is written. Wine is a mocker. Strong drink is raging. Whosoever to see thereby is not wise. You guys ain't wise. I ain't going. I'm going home to my family. Uh, the girls say, hey, we're going to go out Friday night for a Christmas party. Won't you come? We don't want our husbands. We're going to all go to uh, Charlotte and we're going to have a good time. They, it is written. It is written. God ordained the family. The husband is to leave his uh, father and mother cleave to his wife. God wants a husband and wife to enjoy Christmas together, do things together. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the way you resist temptation. Use the scripture. Amen. I'll tell you another way is pray. Pray. Pray about it. If you've got something really tempting you, I'll tell you what you do. You're, you're tempted to do something you know you ain't got no business doing. And you can justify it 10,000 ways. Well, well, you know, well, well. It's a deep subject, ain't it? There ain't no way you can make it right, and you know you can't make it right. That old brain, it'll finagle around and try to say, well, because of this, it's okay for me to do that. You don't know what a bad day I've had, so I cuss you out. <laughs> you know, some fool, something or another like that. I didn't have time to read my Bible this week. That's the reason I didn't do it, so it's okay. I didn't sin. I didn't have time. You have as much time as I did. I read mine every day. You have as much time as anybody else. Why don't you just say, I sin? You're, you're never going to get nowhere saying, It's not my fault I didn't read my Bible. It's not my fault I'm a hateful grouch. It's not my fault nobody can stand to be around me. It's not my fault that I don't pay my bills. It's not my fault. You'll never get nowhere like that. Say, Look, I'm a sorry, low down, good for nothing sinner. I ought to be ashamed of myself. God help me and pray about it. Pray about it. Don't get no help lying. Like some of them churches. I was in one of them churches where guys come in like that and he said, he come in like that and he said, one of them healers come in and he said, pray for me, my back. He said, don't, don't, don't confess it. Your back's not hurting. He said, it is too. No. Now, if you'd quit lying, the Lord might heal you. I've heard people say, that old back demon's trying to tell me. It ain't a back demon. Your back is really hurting. <laughs> say, my back's killing me, Lord. Would you touch it? You don't try, don't den 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 denial, man. <laughs> You're going to say, oh, I, it's not my fault. I'm, it's not my, it's because, of, well, you don't know how, no. Just shut up all that stuff. Say, I sinned because I chose to. I'm sorry. God help me. Can't blame my sin on other people. Well, you just don't know what happened. I don't know. I don't, and it's got nothing to do with it. It's got nothing to do with what happened. It don't matter what nobody else says or does. You are responsible to God to live like you're supposed to, and I am too. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You think I couldn't do the same thing? I could get up here and say, well, people won't be there on time, and people won't come to Sunday school, and people won't. Well, I just quit, Lord. Uh-uh. Every one of y'all, if every one of y'all went and jumped in the lake and committed suicide last night. My job is to be right here doing what I'm right, doing right now. Amen. I'm responsible to God to do what I'm supposed to do, and you are too. And you ain't going to get nowhere blaming it on somebody else. Amen. Everybody nowadays wants to be the victim, play the victim. Well, it's because of, it's because of that. It's because you chose to do it, and you ain't going to get no help till you admit what you're doing is wrong. And then I tell you another thing is flee. You know the Bible talks about there's some time to flee. Flee youthful lust, especially these young people. You go to a place where stuff's going on. You know, run, man. Oh, they'll call me a chicken. Just buck, 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 buck. do it while you're running. Let them call you whatever they want to. I'd be a live chicken than a dead duck, <laughs> wouldn't, you? wouldn't you? And that's what's going to happen to you. Listen, you better learn how to flee. There's times you ought to flee. There's times you ought to say, no, I'm getting out of here. Right. I remember one time these boys picked me and my neighbor up at the movies in Marion. We used to go to the movies every Saturday night because there wasn't nothing else to do. And uh, his daddy would pick us up one Saturday night. Another guy's daddy would pick us up. My daddy would pick us up the next Saturday night. One, one of these boys liked one of my sisters, and they... Uh, they pulled up to move. You say, said, Danny, y'all want to ride home? And I said, yeah. And they was drinking. 
And I got in the car, and I knew what alcohol smelled like because, yeah, I mean, if you've ever been around it, some live with an alcoholic, you can smell beer as far as near that door right there. And they got in there, and they headed down toward Nebo, and that guy stomped that thing, and I saw it go up over 100, over 110. And, man, I was holding on for dear life. Now, you know what I should have said? Stop! Let me out right here. If I was too big of a chicken... I just held on, and we made it home safe that night. But there, that's, there's been a many a kid got mangled up, messed up for life because they would not say, let me out. Take me home. I'm, you let me out right here, and I'll call my mama. I'll call mom and come get me. You say, well, I don't want them to think I'm out. Well, okay, okay. You'll wind up doing the same thing they're doing. Yield not to temptation for Yielding is sin. The last thing I'm saying is, you know how you get out of temptation? Accept God's way out. You know the Lord always makes a way out. If you'll notice, every time you're really tempted to sin, right before you do it, a little something says, you shouldn't do this. That's the Holy Spirit. He's a gentleman. He ain't going to say, if you do this, I'll kill you. That ain't the way he works. He said, you shouldn't do this. And you have to Push that voice back. I see people in here nodding their head. You know exactly what I'm talking about. You're going to look at something or do something or go somewhere. And there's that split second where you make a conscious choice to do something you're not supposed to do. Now, I don't know what your temptation is this morning. Miss Desi's coming. I don't know what you're struggling with. But I can tell you one thing. Whatever it is, It'll, it'll eat up your life. It'll steal your victory. It'll block your prayers from being answered. And it's never going to work. It's never going to work if it's wrong. It's not going to work. You say, well, Brother Danny, I know it's wrong, but I just, oh, you just don't know how bad this, yeah, I know, I know, I know how the flesh works. I know how the devil works. Right then when you better get a hold of God, friend, and fast a day or two and get the victory before it sucks you down the toilet spiritually because he'll do it. Let's stand. Let's stand by our heads for prayer. Our heads are bowed. Eyes are closed. If the truth were known, three-fourths of us would be up here in this altar this morning saying, God, help me this or that. My attitude my pride, my jealousy, my wicked spirit, my unforgiving attitude. God, that's a sin just like drinking liquor. Not forgiving people. It is. Why well, can't help it? You're a lying too. You're calling God a liar. I don't appreciate that. Calling God a liar. You can do it. You can do all things through Christ that strengthens you. You just backslid and mean don't want to. You don't want to let it go, do you? You don't want to quit that sin, do you? Yeah, and you blame it on somebody else. You'll answer to God one day at the judgment seat of Christ. Come on, let's get in this altar. Come on, come on, let's get in this altar. Others, others, others. Lord, help me. Help me with my unforgiving attitude. Help me for my prideful spirit. Help me for my lust. Help me with my uh, jealousy. Help me with my greed and my envy and, and want of money and and fame and fortune or whatever. God, help me with my wicked, low-down attitude and get my heart right with God. He'll help you. You got to want it. You got to want it. You can't keep justifying it. Call a sin a sin. Get it right this morning. Heavenly Father, I pray right now in Jesus' name that you would bless every single person in this room today. God, I ask in Jesus' name that you would work in our heart. We know that we're living in these old wicked vessels of clay, fallen, sinful flesh. Lord, we know that temptation comes. God, give us grace by your help, by your strength to overcome it. Help us to yield not to temptation, for yielding is sin. Each victory will help us, some other to win. God, help us in these last days to stand Stand for what's right, Lord, and do the right thing. 
Lord, bless all these people in here this morning, these married couples, these single people, these teenagers, these kids. God, every one of them goes through temptation. Lord, I know every one of them fights battles, every one of them. The devil throws stuff at them every single week. He will tomorrow before they get half a work, day's work done. But Lord, I pray that you would help them to resist it. I pray you'd help them to quote the scripture. I pray you'd help them to live right and serve you and do the will of God. God, give us a, a church full of people who learn to live in victory over temptation. For it's in Jesus' name we pray and for his sake. Amen. Amen. Amen.